Hi again. Welcome to week three. During the last two weeks, we looked at the internet as an infrastructure supporting applications. We looked at five different applications as an example. Now we are going to look at how one host sending data to another host on the network actually works. The application layer passes data down to the next layer, the transport layer. The goals for this week are understanding the principles behind the transport layer services. These include multiplexing, demultiplexing, reliable data transfer, flow control, and congestion control, as well as learning about the two main transport layer protocols, UDP and TCP. The transport layer runs only on end systems. This layer provides logical communications between application processes running on different hosts. The sending side breaks application messages into segments, passes them to the network layer. The receiving side reassembles segments in the messages and passes them to the application layer. Via multiplexing and demultiplexing, the transport layer extends the delivery service between two end systems to a delivery service between processes running on the end systems. Multiplexing does the job of gathering the application layer data into chunks, encapsulating them and passing them to the network layer. Demultiplexing is the process of taking the received chunks or segments from the network layer and de-encapsulating them and sending them to the application layer. To do this, the transport layer header includes the destination port number that identifies the destination application program on the remote machine and a source port number that identifies the application on the originating machine. Let's look at UDP versus TCP. UDP is a bare bones protocol. It provides a connectionless service, no handshaking to set up the conversation. It is analogous to sending a letter. Each UDP segment is handled independently. If the segments are lost or received out of order, UDP itself cannot fix it. As a consequence, UDP does not guarantee delivery. Another way of saying this, the sender just casts the application layer data at the receiver and hopes the receiver gets it. One of the main challenges for the development of the internet was to figure out how to achieve reliable communications between devices over a noisy and lossy medium with limited resources. TCP to the rescue. TCP in contrast to UDP was developed as a connection oriented protocol. In TCP, the sender and receiver communicate with each other to set up and regulate the flow of application data. A simple analogy for TCP is a phone call. TCP is designed for a conversation between one sender and one receiver. We will see that TCP provides for orderly data reconstruction and flow control. Once the reliability problem or a pair of communicating devices was solved, then the next problem was to figure out how a large number of devices can share the communication medium. We will look at two of the different algorithms that have been developed to help TCP handle congestion control. This chart provides the contrast between UDP and TCP. You can see that UDP is faster than TCP and can support broadcasts. But if your application really needs reliable data transfer, TCP is the choice. Well, that's it for the introduction for this week. Read chapter three, except for section 3.4, and look at the related videos. For this week, complete the chapter three quiz and assignment, as well as your journal. Complete lab four, the Wireshark DNS lineup, and lab five, the Mininet iPerf traffic measurements. Finally, this would be a good time to start preparing for the midterm, which is coming up in 10 days. The midterm is open book. 
and covers the video and textbook for chapters one, two, and three, and labs zero through four. The midterm does not include section 3.4 of chapter three, except for the opening page of the section and table 3.1. It also does not include the material that will be introduced in week four. 